everyone. We have heard of the Black Scholes Delta hedging, and we vaguely remember how to use this hedging argument to derive the Black Scholes equation. The math could hide the simplicity of the approach, so let's have a simple illustration to see that the delta hedging replication indeed works. Assume the assumptions made by Black Scholes are satisfied. Let's consider a European call option with these parameters. You can use your favorite Black Scholes calculator to confirm that the price of this option is 1.8. So assume you sold this option for 1.8 to get this amount in cash today. But by selling the option, you are committing to paying the option payoff at maturity. Today's stock price is 10. At maturity, it could be anywhere from 0 to infinity. But if it happened to be higher than the strike price, then we will have to pay the difference. So the payoff will depend on where the stock price lands. The premium we got is cash and the natural thing we can do with cash is to deposit it with the bank so that it grows at the risk-free rate until the maturity of the option, idealistic assumptions. We are going to adopt this approach of delaying all cash flows to the maturity of the option. The rate is 5% and the maturity is 1 year, so the 1.8 will grow to 1.895. Now the problem we have, cash is certain, but the option payoff isn't. So our position is risky and we want to hedge the risk. And let's see if Black Scholes Delta hedging does the trick. The stock price is stochastic but let's say it takes this trajectory. We shall see later on that the approach should lead to the same conclusions for other shapes the path may take. Of course the path have to have the properties the Black Scholes require. So for example, if the stock price has jumps, then we are not in a Black Scholes world and we don't say the delta hedging will work in that case. Now we won't see the full realization of the stock price at the start of course. It will be gradually revealed to us over time. Let's say we monitor the price every quarter to start with. So over the life of the option, which is one year, we will have five observations, this including today. Today price is 10 and after one quarter has passed, we will observe that the price has increased to 10.56, then declined to 7.99 the following quarter, and then increased to 9.66, and then to 13.16 on the option maturity date. These are just quarterly observations by the way, drawing lines might help to see that. So the observations are one quarter apart and we know one quarter is 0 0.25 in years. Now if we know the price history, we know the rest of the parameters, we can calculate the deltas over time. And let's mark the five observations. So the initial delta is known today because we know the stock price and all of the parameters. A quarter later, we will observe that the price has increased to 10.56 and the maturity has declined by one quarter and the rest of the parameters are fixed. And if we plug in these values into the black shoals, you will see the delta comes out to be 0 0.67 and similarly we can calculate the delta in the next two quarters. We don't show the value of the delta at the option maturity because it's of no use to us as we are not hedging past the maturity so we don't need it here though you can see here is equal to 1. Now considering this trajectory and the evolution of price and delta we can ask what outcome would have delta hedging produced we see the initial delta is 0 0.627. So to replicate the option, we should hold these many units of the stock, assuming they sell fractions of stocks. We are luckily in the electronic age where you can buy anything, so not an unrealistic assumption, I suppose. Otherwise, multiply everything by 1000. In a way, we are increasing our holding from 0 to 0 0.627. A unit costs 10, so we multiply it by 10, and hence, the initial delta H cost 6.27. Where do we get the money from? Of course the generous bank. So we borrow this amount and by the option maturity, which is one year from now, it would have grown at the risk-free rate. We know R is 5%. So at maturity we will have to pay this amount, which is 6.59. And we get ownership of 0 0.627 units of the stock. Now time marches on and comes the next quarter. We see the price has increased and the delta has also increased. 
So the delta hedging dictates we increase our holding to the new delta and we buy the incremental units at the then current price. We can plug in the values. Essentially, we are increasing delta from 0 0.627 to 0 0.67 at the price of 10.56. The cost comes out to be 0 0.454 and we borrow this from the bank at the bank rate for the remaining maturity of the option which is now 3 quarters and 3 quarters is 0 0.75. R is again 5% and we will have to repay this amount so we change the sign to negative and this will evaluate to 0 0.471 and our holding of stock has now increased to 0 0.67. We move to the next quarter. The price has gone down and so has the delta. So we need to change our holding to the new delta at the then current price. We want to change delta to 0 0.29 from 0 0.67 and the price is 7.99. Reducing the stock holding releases cash which we invest with the bank for the remaining maturity of the option at the risk-free rate and we will be getting this cash at maturity hence the plus sign and this comes out to be 3.113 and we are now holding 0 0.29 units of the stock. Next, the price increases and so does the delta. So we need to change our holding to the new delta and we buy incremental units at the then price. And we will need to borrow this amount for the remaining maturity, which is 0 0.25 now. If you plug in the values, we will get minus 2.054 and we now hold half a unit of the stock. We can now aggregate the deposits and borrowing resulting from the rebalancing of delta hedge. So the net sum is minus 6. And we can also write the sum of these delta rebalancing generically using summation. So this hold for a generic N now. The TIs just represent the time corresponding to the sequence of observations for rebalancing. So here T0 is 0, T1 is 0 0.25 and so forth. So now we have the three components. The first one is the cash flows from the investment of the option premium. We then have the net sum of cash flows resulting from the rebalancing of delta hedge. And we own 0 0.5 units of the stock. Notice this holding was decided at the observation prior to maturity because we can't see the future and we will sell these units at the price observed on the maturity date which is 13.16 so we will get 6.58 if we add these cash flows we get 2.47 but remember we sold the call option with a strike price of 10 so under this scenario we will have to pay 3.16 to the option buyer the delta hedging has helped but it hasn't fully replicated the option payoff. Reason being we have been sleeping most of the time, waking up once a quarter to monitor the price and rebalance the hedge. To get a better replication, we will have to be more active. To see, let's double the observation points. But before we do so, let's remove the symbols to create space. And now let's insert an additional observation between any two observation points. Let's label the stock price at the new observation points and let's label the delta as well. The premium amount hasn't changed because the same option with the same strike and the same maturity but we have more frequent delta rebalancing now and as a result the final stock holding is now 0 0.896 which is close to what we would like so the stock holding now generates 11.79 and we can apply the delta rebalancing borrowing lending procedure to these eight points. The initial hedge is similar. We increase our position from 0 to 0 0.627, which is the initial delta, at a price of 10, borrowing the money to fund the position for the maturity of the option. We then need to rebalance the delta to 0 0.596 at the next observation, at the price of 9.77 and then to 0 0.67 and so forth until the penultimate observation when we rebalance the delta to 0 0.896 at the price of 11.76. If you add all these, you will see the net sum of cash flows resulting from the rebalancing of delta H is minus 10.46. And now if we add the three components, we get 3.225, which is closer to the payoff we want to replicate. Let's remove the labels now because if we increase the frequency, 
we won't be able to see the label so you got to trust me now and then verify using your own spreadsheet with your own random numbers you will just be adding more points updating the figures associated with the delta rebalancing and the final stock holding so this is what you should be watching out for if we double the frequency final stock holding increases but so does the liability associated with delta hedging and if you add the amount you will get 3.219 which is a slight deterioration but we don't give up easily so we double the frequency again we see slight further deterioration but we continue doubling the frequency the replication is better now and if we double it once again we are replicating the payoff to two decimal places which isn't too bad now this was one realization of the stock price Let's see what happens under a different scenario in which the path leads to the option expiring out of the money. So let's try the delta rebalancing with frequency of two observations per quarter. So you can see delta hedging is taking you to delta of zero and the accuracy of the replication shall improve if you increase the number of steps. Let's see another path. So you can see delta hedging does replicate the option payoff. Hopefully the black shoal delta hedging will not sound too theoretical now please give a thumbs up if you would like to continue to see similar videos and i look forward to seeing you in the next